What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today it's the team selection preview series for game week 14. I'm going to take you back through how my team did in the last game week and then look how it's looking for this game week as well. So any transfers that I'm looking at doing, players that I'm a bit unsure about and captaincy as well. Before I jump into that, I did want to say this video has kindly been sponsored once again by OneFootball. If you have not already checked them out, it's a completely free football app, team news, FPL news, um, live score updates and stuff on the weekend everything you could want as an fpl manager make sure you click the link in the description below that'll take you straight to where you can download it or just search one football on the ios and android apps it's completely free worth giving a go and seeing what you think otherwise let's jump into the video so first up let's have a look at how i did in game week 13 71 points overall i took a four point hit so obviously that's 67 net total um, another good week and it's a bit weird at the moment i've had two good game weeks in a row um, increase the rank a little bit. I'm still outside the top 500k, so I obviously want to get that much improved over the Christmas period. But given I was nearly a million um, two weeks ago, that's not a bad rank jump. Uh, two green arrows netting nearly 500,000 places. So it just shows how quickly um, things can go up as well as down. Um, so overall point seven hundred and twenty-one. So sitting okay, I think, at this stage of the season. Pope with another nine point. A few of us were probably thinking about maybe getting rid of him. Um, and maybe you still could, given the fixtures. But nine points is a decent total. Um, he's kind of really shown what Burnley and him can do. So in two, I think that's like three or four clean sheets in a row now, which is just insane for his price. Um, he has gone up to five million now, but uh, a lot of people got him for 4.5, 4.6. Maguire, um, frustrating again. Uh, the third game week in a row, no clean sheet. We will give him one more chance. We'll discuss that in a minute. Um, but he hasn't got more than six points all season. We know it was such a bad transfer, but um, conceding three goals to Sheffield United was not good at all. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold, another game, another non-Liverpool clean sheet. Honestly, if you'd known that they were only going to get this many uh, two clean sheets in the first 13 games, you probably wouldn't have gone for them at the start of the season. Yes, they got attack and returns, um, he and Robertson, uh, but I'm not sure it's enough to justify yet the, the price. So we'll discuss whether we should be keeping them. Mane came in, I took a four-point hit. So Mane and Madison came in, Yarmolenko and Salah went out. Yarmolenko had to go, I was always looking at getting uh, in the Leicester midfielder. And I just wasn't too sure about Salah's ankle. And I know going forward, I'm going to want a captain, a Liverpool player. So I just wanted the guy that's fit, no ankle issues, brought Manny in, he scores straight away. So the hit has re been repaid. So I've taken Sterling and Salah out for 12 points worth of hits over the last two game weeks. And so far, I'm up on the deal. We'll see if that continues. And part of the deal last week was to get in Jimenez and Vardy. And they've performed again. Vardy with another 12 point, a, le a little bit lucky maybe. When you've got a guy on penalties um, who gets to retake them, it's pretty good. Abraham blanked. A few people are starting to worry about him, but I think the next fixture is good, so I'm going to keep him. So overall decent. I'm glad I kept the Bruyne. Obviously got his goal there. Mount's a bit frustrating, but I think he might come back into the team. Let's see how we're looking for game week 14. So as I said with Pope, and I've kind of talked to this about this before with uh, cheaper goalkeepers. Obviously, they are going to have their ups and downs. They're only a cheap price. You shouldn't expect massive returns every single week anyway, and the ceiling for a goalkeeper is generally quite low as well. So this is the last of um, Pope's good fixtures. So Crystal Palace at home, got to keep him for that. I could look to ship him on, but it would have to be a time probably when I've got two free transfers and absolutely nothing to do and I want to blow one on a keeper because generally you're just not sure um, where the points are going to come from. Now, obviously Henderson looks good for Sheffield United. Now he's um, kind of couldn't play in the last game week because of uh, being on loan from United, but he can play. And from game week 15 onwards, they look pretty good, at least for four or five game weeks. But after that, it gets a bit tricky for Sheffield United. So the double up looks good for a few game weeks, but if you want like a longer term pick, someone pointed out on the stream, Business Cat, one of the Patreons, um, that Guaita uh, at Crystal Palace has really good fixtures. Now a bit more expensive, but his fixtures are good for a long time. So that could be a way to back the Crystal Palace defense. But for now, I'm going to keep him and I have no real plans to, to move him on just yet, but we'll see how many transfers I've saved up. Currently, I'm playing Maguire, Tamori and Trent. I think West Ham are in such um, a bad position at the moment. I've got to play um to Maury against them i think chelsea got a good chance of a clean sheet there I only conceded two against uh, man city away from home i think defensively they're they're actually looking pretty solid even though um, maybe at the start of the season it wasn't looking like that i think they've kind of um kind of found their game and counting etc is playing back as well now so i think they're looking quite good and against west ham you've got a back they'll get the clean sheet there trent obviously plays i don't even really need to talk about that too much the clean sheets are obviously a frustration, um, but I think this is one of those picks where you've got to forget about what you've already not gained. So we haven't got enough clean sheets, right? He's not good value, or he's not been good value for the first 13 game weeks. That's fair enough. I don't think anyone would argue for that. But he's still got attack and returns, and the fixtures that are coming up are so good for Liverpool. There has to be some clean sheets. Now, 
Obviously, it doesn't work like that. Just because they've got good fixtures doesn't mean they'll definitely get uh, clean sheets. But um, I think I want to continue to back the fixtures. And there just has to be some coming for Liverpool. And if they can get attacker returns as well. I know I've said this before, but they will be great value over the next four game weeks. So, yes, not great value necessarily for the first 13 game weeks, but still done pretty well. Um, I would still back them for the next four. And then Maguire, I'm actually benching Soyuncu, which I know a lot, not a lot of people are going to like. He's got Everton at home. Uh, but Maguire, Aston Villa at home, do I give him one more chance to turn it around at Old Trafford and get the clean sheet for me? The probably the, the way I should play it is Soyuncu and play him. But I just feel like, although Aston Villa have been okay this season uh, from an attacking sense, I just think if Everton want to turn it on, um, and they might cause Leicester some problems. So it's a tough one. I think they've both got a bit of goal threat. Obviously, Maguire maybe a little bit more, even though he hasn't got his goal yet. Um, and Aston Villa at home, I would generally back that over Everton at home. But given how Leicester have been so good defensively, I might have to make that switch. So don't shout at me too, yet, too much yet. By the time Saturday comes around, I might make that switch. But I'm really happy to have so many defensive options that I'm considering playing this week. I think my midfield is looking pretty nice this week. Um, Madison's obviously just come in. Got about three or four more nice fixtures uh, and then I'll see whether I want to keep them. Obviously, Leicester in general have been such good value this year so far um, that the, the the kind of plan is to keep him. But let's see after this three and four. Maybe there'll be another midfielder that comes up. Obviously, Zaha finally got his goal against Liverpool, so that's his first goal of the season. Crystal Palace, like I've just said, for the goalkeeper, loads of good fixtures. He's a potential option. Maybe Martial, once he gets the top six games out of the way as well, he could come in. But right now, Madison stays. Manny is in, um, and he's currently going to be my captain, I think, this week. It's between him and Vardy. I think it's very close. Either way, definitely happy to have him for Brighton at home, given that Salah's potential ankle, uh, ankle injury um, could cause him some more problems. Obviously, um, he's had his full rest now, so that's really going to help. So the chances are he's going to start the next game, and he could beat Manny. But Manny's been so good. I think I read a stat that... In 2019, he scored nine more goals than any other player in the Liverpool team. So he is the man in form and has been for a long time. So super happy to have him. Mason Mount, like I said, a few people looking to get rid of him. Um, I think West Ham at home, you have to keep him for this game. They're so poor um, going forward and in defence that um, there could be points there. Now, the problem for him is he's not necessarily going to be playing this number 10 position that we want him to play. And obviously, he did get rotated against City. They kind of played with more, um, you know players that are much more capable of passing the ball around and maybe winning the ball back the Mount is in Kovacic, Kante uh, and Jorginho so that is a worry going forward you don't want that rotation risk but for West Ham at home I want to see him play and if he starts again that gives me confidence that they're not going to shift that midfield around too much but coming up to Christmas we know there's going to be rotation do I want that headache I think West Ham at home Villa at home let's see if he starts both those matches I think if he starts the West Ham game I have to give him the Villa game as well that's the current plan anyway and then I might look to ship him on. But him and De Bruyne are both interesting options because obviously Spurs did pretty well against West Ham. How much was that was West Ham? How much was that of uh, Mourinho coming in? We can't really be too sure. I think a lot of it maybe was West Ham. But it is positive to play. And obviously Lucas Moura started, which I said I talked about on Twitter before the game. He was probably going to play 4-2-3-1, Sun and Moura wingers. And he did. And obviously Lucas Moura is only 7 million. So I could upgrade Mal because I got 0.7 in the bank. Straight to Lucas Moura. They've got Bournemouth at home next. I think Sun is a really great option. I'm tempted to do De Bruyne to Sun as well. Now, De Bruyne has Newcastle away and then Burnley away. So, two away games. I'm not going to captain him. Similar situation to Sterling, but obviously he is cheaper, so maybe a little bit better value um, there. And obviously did just get his goal as well. The problem I have with bringing in Spurs players is they have Bournemouth at home, which could be great for returns. But then they've got Man United away, which I think will be a tight match. Um, so I'm not necessarily expecting returns in that game. So do I get rid of De Bruyne to Sun? I think Spurs fixtures are generally pretty good over Christmas. Luka Mo uh, Lucas Moura in for Mount is obviously an option as well. So I think if you're going to jump on the Spurs assets this week, I actually think it's fine. Um, I think Bournemouth is such a good fixture that you could get your return of points straight away and then hope for something in the Man United game. And obviously we've seen Moura do well against Man United before. Mourinho is obviously going to want to win that match. He's obviously got an insight into the club, the players and stuff like that as well, or at least a lot of them. Uh, so I think it looks good. So right now I'm, pro I'm keeping De Bruyne amount. I think two transfers could be good. I think next week I have to bring in Lundstrom in game week 15. His fixtures are too good. He's going to get played so much by all FPL managers that I have to match them. So he'll come in for Maguire probably. Uh, but De Bruyne or Mount to, to Son Amore is my thinking, but I'm not quite set on it just yet. And then we have the forward line. Um, pretty template-y uh, for sure. Abraham and Vardy in particular and Jimenez as well getting picked up by quite a few people given his consistency. So I think for now, these three, none of them are going anywhere. My captaincy is currently on Vardy. I think Everton have been in some pretty poor form recently. 
Um, and a home game for Leicester is always going to be kind of a winner. So it's currently on him, but I am torn between him and Mane. I think with Mane, um, Brighton's a really good fixture, not been as good um, away from home defensively as they have been at home. Yes, Dunk will be back. Um, he missed the Leicester game, but I think that's a really good fixture for Liverpool. I'd back him, Salah and Firmino to do well. So because it's so close, I might actually switch back to Mane because the, obviously midfielder gets a clean sheet point, which I'm hoping for from Brighton with Trent, um, and also gets the extra point for the goal as well. So there's a lot of value in in for going for possibly Mane over Vardy. So that's definitely a consideration there. Abraham, a few people getting cold feet about him now, some inconsistent returns recently, but West Ham at home and Villa at home, similar to Matt, I have to keep him for those two games and then reconsider um, and Jimenez, I mean, he's in such good form, 4-4 four and four now. Looking back to the kind of um, consistency that we've seen from him so much last season. Sheffield United at home, yes, a very defensive team and solid defensive. Just shipped three to Man United. Um, I think Wolves can score in this game. And if they do, then Jimenez are very likely to be involved. Can this front line be broken um, in terms of bringing in different players? You've got Jesus now, 9.5 million. Aguero's going to be out for a few game weeks, it seems. Um... So he's a massive differential. I think he's less than 2% owned. He's a similar price to Vardy though, so it depends whether you can fit him in with your team structure. I don't think anyone's getting rid of Vardy right now. So it's a tough one for Jesus because as soon as Aguero's back, you know you've then got a transfer on your hands. So I'm not sure about that one, but Rashford looks good as well, about 8.4, 8.5 million, 11 points at the weekend, very good. Um, did better than Martial as well, though he's obviously a bit more expensive. So players like that could potentially break the line. Ings has really good fixtures if you needed to free up some money as well. And Wood's been pretty consistent for Burnley. So there are other options, but I'm really happy with this front line. I think if Abraham blanks in the next two games, then maybe I will have to reconsider him. And, and you know, in two week, two game weeks time, um, I'll, I'll choose my option then. But right now, there's, there's no need to get rid of it. So I'm really happy with the team this week. Loads of home fixtures. Only real key decisions are, do I bring in Sun or Mora for Mount or De Bruyne? Do I captain Mane or Vardy? I'm pretty sure I'm going to go for Mane in the end. And do I play Maguire and Soinju? Let me know in the comments below what you think. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here as well. Hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos and live streams go absolutely live. And if you've not already checked out OneFootball, it is completely free. So you might as well give it a go and see what you think. Link in the description below or just search for one football on the uh, Android and iOS stores. Um, otherwise, I'll have the preview tomorrow, live stream on Thursday. So make sure you check out all of that uh, content. I'll be coming to you soon. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Cheers all.